So now we've talked about what happens to your signal over the air. Let's talk about the link budget. And of course, we're going to talk about a link budget. We have to talk about decibels. Now, decibels can be incredibly confusing to people. So let me spend a little bit of time helping you understand what a decibel is. In fact, I put the equation here for you as well. So a decibel is literally a representation of the difference between two power levels. So say, for instance, at home, you may have on your music system an amplifier. And so power comes in and then the signal is amplified and more power leaves. And so you've got a ratio between the power coming in and the power going out. And that ratio is represented in decibels. Now, the decibel is actually the log representation. And let me give you a, an illustration as to why we demonstrate it in a log form. Now, let's say, for instance, you transmit at your access point, transmitting at, let's say, 100 milliwatts. The time that signal gets to the receiver on your laptop or your IP phone is actually going to receive something like about yeah, 10 to the minus 10 milliwatts. And so the difference between transmitting at 100 milliwatts and receiving at something like 10 to the minus 10 milliwatts, that's a tremendous ratio difference. And so to represent those large numbers, we take the log of the differences in power. And that's simply all that a decibel is. And people get confused when you see things like dBm and dBi and the fact that I can add them together. But bear in mind, it's not like adding meters and feet. You're not dealing with units here. You're dealing with ratios. And of course, I can combine ratios together. The other thing that people kind of get confused about is, is because it's a ratio and I'm taking a log of a ratio, if the ratio is actually below 1, so P1 is actually smaller than P2, so that ratio is actually below 1, what happens is the log of a number below 1 is actually a minus. And so you can see, for instance, in this table, that if I take the log of 0.5, what I actually end up with here is minus 3 dB. And people get very confused about that. But it's again, all I'm doing is taking a ratio, and it's a ratio less than 1. So most RF engineers are very comfortable with the dBs, etc. But many people in an IT environment don't work with decibels all the time, and it can be quite confusing. And so I put this reference chart in here for you. And there's a few things that you should always remember. Like, for instance, if I say to you that I've got a 3 dB gain, what they're saying is that is twice the power. A 10 dB gain, 10 times the power, etc. So this table can be a useful reference for you. And if you're going out onto a site survey, the reason why I always take a calculator with me is because you have to calculate occasionally going from milliwatts to decibels or decibels to milliwatts. And I personally find it easier just to take a calculator with me and just calculate it. Now, a link budget is a bit like doing a financial plan. I've earned this money this month and I have to pay these bills. Do I have any money left at the end of the day? Same thing with a link budget. So let's take a look at this example. So I've got my transmitter and of course it's transmitting at a certain power level. So maybe it's transmitting at 18 dBm. And let's say I'm using an external antenna in this illustration. Then what I'm going to have is I'm going to have loss. So as that signal goes up those cables and when it goes through any connectors that I might have between the transmitter and the antenna, I'm going to suffer loss. And so I need to take that away, i.e. my signal's attenuated. I've lost some of the signal strength. Then I get to the antenna. 
and we have antenna gain. So I might have a 5 dBi antenna gain, so I can add that to the link budget. Then I propagate out and over the air, and I'm going to lose signal strength, depending on what that environment is. I might be losing it simply because I'm going through the air, I may be going through walls and other obstructions, but I'm going to have some path loss. Then my signal arrives at the receiving antenna, and I have antenna gain at the receiving antenna as well. That will help me recover the signal over the air. And of course, if I'm using an external antenna at the receiver, then I'm also going to have loss as my signal goes down that cable to the receiver. And any connectors, of course, will also introduce loss. So now my signal arrives at the receiver. And the question is, do I have enough signal strength to recover your ones and zeros? And this is where the receiver sensitivity comes in. So each device, the access point, a laptop, an IP phone, they all have different receiver sensitivities. And the issue is, did I receive enough signal strength on that device to be able to recover your ones and zeros? So when you're thinking about your link budget, it's really important that you think about your receiver sensitivity. And in this illustration, I've got two devices. I've got a laptop and I've got an IP phone. And when you look at the specifications of these different devices, it'll tell you what the receiver sensitivity is. And in this illustration, I've got an IP phone with a receiver sensitivity of minus 67 dBm and a laptop with a receiver sensitivity of minus 76 dBm. Now, if I plan out my cell coverage such the received signal strength out on the edge is minus 76 dBm, you can see I've got a much larger coverage area. What's going to happen when my IP phone moves out into this area here is that it's no longer going to be able to communicate with my access point. So my laptop will be fine, but my IP phone won't be able to communicate. So when you do your site survey, it's very important that you find out the different devices that are going to connect to the access point and you find the device that has the weakest receiver sensitivity, just like on this diagram is the IP phone, because that's the one that's actually going to define your coverage area. And in this scenario, I would have to do my site planning based on this IP phone and this here would be my coverage area.